What's up guys? About to head out to another home game session in Springfield, Missouri. It is December, no it's not, it's January something 2020. So I guess technically this will be our first session of the uh, of the new year. So that's kind of exciting. Anyway, going to be playing some 1-3 No Limit Hold'em. We have a three game winning streak going, so or a three session winning streak. So hopefully we can keep that going and play some hands well and get some good content. So we are on our way. Number one, I look down at Ace Jack Offsuit from the Big Blind. It's a straddle pot, and we're playing six handed. The game's just getting started. I open up to $20 and get three callers. The flop comes down King Jack 8, so not a terrible flop for me, but not amazing, obviously, since there's an overcard out there. The action checks to me, I bet $35. The small blind check raises me to $75. I think about it for a little bit and decide to make the call as he can be doing this with a lot of flush draws. There'll be a lot of straight draws, just a lot of combo draws out there that he could be check raising and trying to get me to fold my equity. The turn is not a great one for us. The turn is the queen of diamonds. Small blind goes all in for about 200, I believe, or something like that, a pretty sizable bet. Um, I don't think I have a lot of options here. I think I just have to fold. He could still just have spades but any of his straight draws came through, and if he has spades and a pair, I'm like crushed, so I fold, and he shows us queen 10 of spades, so he turned, he flopped a monster, turned a better pair than us, so we were drawing insanely thin, so good fold by us. So hand number two, I look down at ace queen of spades from the cutoff in a straddle pot. I start this hand out with about $200. The big blind opens up to 15, I go ahead and 3-bet to 45, and the big blind calls. Probably could have 3-bet a little bit bigger here, not super happy with my size, especially playing only 6-handed. I think I can definitely punish what is going to be a loose opening range with a uh, larger 3-bet size. Probably should have went like 60 maybe? That might be too much though. I mean that's 4x, that's not too crazy. Eh, that might be a little crazy. Anyway, flop comes down, terrible for us. Flop is 632 all hearts. So, not sure what I'm thinking here, but after the big blind checks, I go ahead and lead out for 50. No reason to not just check back on this flop. Obviously, I completely whiffed. I've got ace high. I'm going to be ahead a lot of the time. I can just go ahead and see a free card. It'll be fine. But I don't do that. I see about $50 and the big blind goes all in. I had bet $50 of what was only $150 stacks, only had about $100 behind. So anyway, out of frustration or idiocracy or hoping that he just has one heart maybe, I make the call and he shows us pocket twos for a flop set. So we are drawing almost dead. He ends up rivering quads and we have successfully bricked our first buy-in. So we go ahead and do something that we never do and hate doing and buy in for another bullet. So we're back in the action with 300 in front of us after lighting a pile of money on $200 on fire in this hand. I bet after watching that last hand, you're thinking, what can I possibly do to get to play against this guy? Well, it's easy. All you have to do is send me an email or a direct message on Twitter or a direct message on Instagram with the information on the screen and I will be able to get you into some of the softest games playing against players including myself on Poker Bros. And number three was a pretty unfortunate one. We are playing six-handed still I believe. We have around 300 in front of us. I look down at a seven of diamonds from the hijack under the gun limbs 
I limp, expecting to call a raise. Big blind, sure enough, makes it $13. And the under the gun player and I both make the call. Flop comes down a pretty decent looking one for us. The flop is ace of spades, eight of diamonds, five of clubs. So we flop top pair, very middling kicker. Uh, the big blind checks under the gun, bets $35. I make what I think is a very straightforward call here, and the big blind also calls. The turn is the Jack of Hearts, so not a turn card that I think there's any reason we should be scared of or hate. The big blind checks, under the gun, bet 65. I'm starting to get a little concerned here, but I make the call anyway, and then very oddly, the big blind calls. The river is a complete blank, it's two of hearts. The action actually checks through on the river, so I'm thinking that I'm going to be good here a lot of the time, because if anybody has a big ace, they're going to go ahead and bet it again. But unfortunately, I'm wrong, as under the gun rolls over jack five of diamonds, and the big blind says they had some sort of draw as they muck their hand. So we lose a very frustrating one after somebody decides they just have to see a flop with the good old jack five, and get rewarded for that by banging off two pair on the river. So hand number four was a very standard one. I look down at pocket tens from the button. Action folds to the cutoff, who opens to 13. I three bet all in for my last sad little $44 and get called by the cutoff, who shows us a seven of hearts. So we are a 68-32 favorite in this $90 pot. Unfortunately, the board runs out very bad for us. Flop comes jack high with one heart, and you can already see where this is going. The turn is a heart and the river is a heart, giving him a flush. So we are out of there and we are sad. Well, that went about as absolutely terrible as a poker session can possibly go. I lost every hand that I've played, post-flop anyway. The only hands that I won were hands where I raised pre-flop and won the blinds. I lost two buy-ins, which is something I never let myself do because I lost the first buy-in so fast. I've played the worst that I've played on the blog so far. I have no idea what I was doing. That was terrible. I'm super tilted. Super disappointed in myself. Uh, damn. Well, time to do some studying. Time to get to work on the next blog. Um, yeah, not too much to say. Don't play terrible. Don't break your uh, your bankroll management rules, even if it seems like a silly one, like only losing one buy-in at a time. I just don't play well on the second buy-in. It just ugh. And like I didn't, I caught no cards, which is which seems fair given how good I've been running lately. But ugh, man. Well, guys, I'm signing off. I will see you next week. See you on Sunday for some sort of hand review video or some sort of video. We're holding steady with two uh, videos a week. Um, yeah, feel pretty good about that. Uh, the channel's been going well. Very happy with that. Learning some new video editing things. Super happy with that. So we're not going to let having one bad session get us down. Having a strong mindset is super important in poker more than in a lot of occupations or competitions or whatever. So, yeah, we're going to be back at them soon. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. One last thing, if you guys are in the market for some poker apparel, check out the Villain Poker Store. I have a discount code, Kenny G. Use that, and you will get 20% off your purchase. They've got some pretty cool stuff in there. The link to the store is in the description, so get in there and check it out.